The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Hi, as the bird house thing. Okay, Casey. Say, Tony was in here and he dropped this car. Let me see it. It says A-H-T-M-F-N-I-G. I wonder what that here means. Here comes Tony now. Hey, wait a minute. See if I can get him. Hi, Tony. What does A-H-T-M-F-N-I-G mean, huh? Oh, what? You don't know? Why, everybody knows, Casey. Huh? Everybody knows that means Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Queen of the Amazon. Late afternoon, the Blue Note Cafe. The door opens, admitting a flurry of snow, a blast of freezing air, and a very cold Casey. Ethelbert, the head bartender, sir. Well, look who's here. Oh, give me a warmer, Ethelbert, quick. Got any fresh coffee? Sure, Casey. Chilly out, huh? Chilly. My fingers are dropping off, and there's no feeling in my feet. I think they're going to drop off. I guess winter's pretty hard on you delicate people. Oh, nuts to you. <laughs> Here, this will make you feel better. Ah, thanks, pal, thanks. Where's Miss Williams? Oh, she's trying to thaw out over at the office. We just finished an 18-mile drive. I thought we'd both freeze before we got back. Oh, here's Miss Williams now. Hello, oh. Ethelbert. Hi, Annie. Uh-huh. Come on, sit down. Uh, Ethelbert, get her a cup uh, of coffee. Oh, no, Ethelbert. No can do. Casey, we've just been handed another assignment. What? We just got back No, you know how kind-hearted City Desk is. We now get back into our nice cold automobile and drive out to a little farm near the Lindenhurst Aircraft Plant. Oh, near Lindenhurst Aircraft? Well, that's 20 miles out and 20 miles back, Yeah, that's all. And we cover an attempted burglary. An attempted burglary? Mm-hmm. Oh. The woman who runs the farm caught the burglars before they could take anything. The two eggs are now in cells at the old Turnpike Police Station. Oh, Annie, there's no news value in that kind of a yarn. Certainly not enough to warrant a 40-mile drive in zero weather. Listen, I'm going to go up and talk to that murderer that calls himself a city editor. I'm going to tell now, him... Now, hold it, Casey. What? We're going to have a swell comedy story. Comedy? Mm-hmm. The two would-be burglars took quite a beating from the little farmerette who discovered him. You see, she used to be with a circus. Her specialty was bending iron bars into pretzel shapes. And she was billed as Marina, Queen of the Amazon. A circus strong woman. Huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> Imagine two dopey eggs trying to rob a circus strong lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think it'll be worth a long, cold drive, Casey? Uh, nothing's worth that, but let's go. Oh. Swell business, this newspaper rack. Only dope stick to it, Annie. My feet are like chunks of ice. I can hardly work the brakes in this car. Oh, now stop crabbing, Casey. I'm cold, too. What, you are? Oh, have a look. Let me tuck that blanket around you, little butter. Okay. There you are, honey. You know, city desk shouldn't have sent you out here on a day like this. Why not? I'm no softy. And I'm looking forward to meeting Marina, Queen of the Amazon. She sounds interesting. Sounds like a homely mess of muscle with a personality of a male gorilla. Oh, that, that must be her place. Uh, just ahead of us. Yeah. Say, look, has she got a regular name, or do we just address her as Your Majesty, Queen Marina? Her real name is Millicent Hodges. Millicent? Mm-hmm. This nice-looking farmhouse she has. Yeah, not bad. Well, I'll turn in, and we'll park in the driveway. Oh, she's, uh, she's back near those chicken houses. That that must be her, Casey. Yeah. Is she big? Oh, I guess mm, six feet two, at least. Good 300 pounds. None of it's fat. I'm going to stop here. Oh, she's seen us. She's coming over. Hey, Annie, you mm-hmm. know something? She's got a pretty face, kind of a baby face. Yeah. Now, let's get out of here. There's something I can do for you folks. Oh, are you Miss Millicent Hodges? Yeah, that's me. Well, we're from the Morning Express. We'd like to get the facts about the trouble you had here today. Oh, I didn't have no trouble, mister. That's what them two fellas had who tried to rob me. <laughs> yeah, I can believe that. <laughs> uh, this is Miss Williams. My name is Casey. 
Pleased to meet you. Hello, Miss Hodges. I kind of figured some of your reporters would be getting out here pretty soon. Well, I hope you won't mind telling us about what happened. Of course, I don't mind. Like you probably heard, I used to be with a circus, and my kind of folks never hate publicity. Oh, but no use talking out here in cold. Come inside the house where it's warm. Oh, that suits me fine. <laughs> me too. I like cold, bracing days like this, but they must be kind of tough on you little people. Mm. Oh, that'll hold you for a while, Casey. Here, step in. Thanks. Oh, heat again. This is swell. Kick yourself chairs near the stove and set. Oh, here's a nice, comfortable one, Miss Williams. I'll, I'll take my knitting off it. Oh, your knitting sock. Uh-huh. For a gentleman friend. Uh, oh, I wish I was your gentleman friend, Miss Hodges. Why, Mr. Casey. Oh, those socks will really keep a guy's feet from freezing. Look at the wool in it, Annie. And Miss Hodges knits beautifully. Our girl. Oh, uh, it is uh, Miss Hodges, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's right. I ain't ever been married yet. Uh, but you want to hear how I caught them two bums and knocked their heads together. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to shoot some pictures of you, too. Oh, I, I hope you don't mind if I powder my nose and push up my hair first. I, I wouldn't like the circus folks who know me to think I'm letting myself go since I went back to farming. Sure, Miss Hodges, you're right. <laughs> when did you leave the circus? And you said you went back to farming? Uh, after the old folks died and with the war coming on, it seemed growing food was more important than weight lifting. Oh, well, now, you can take my pictures any time you want to. <laughs> oh, I hope I look a little better than I did before. You look swell. Uh, he's one of them flattering men, ain't he, Miss Williams? Well, I've uh, never noticed it. <clears throat> look, if you'll sit down and tell Miss Williams your story, I'll just take some informal shots while you're talking, and then uh, later I'll ask you to pose for a few. All right. Well, about them burglars. Now, I left the house to go out to the cow barn, which I do at just that time every day. Until a week ago, I had a good old watchdog who stayed here while I did such chores, but he died suddenly. That's something poison, I think. Oh, well, that's a shame. Well, when I got inside the barn, I remembered that I clean forgot something. So I started to go back for it. And what did I see but a couple of strange fellas sneaking into my house by the back door? Oh, Mr. Casey, you took a picture. Yes, Miss Hyde. Oh, I hope it didn't look awful. Mm -hmm. I snapped it then because I thought you looked especially nice. <laughs> I don't trust you at all. <laughs> I never lie to a good-looking woman. Oh, you. Uh, getting back to your story, how long do you usually stay in that cow barn, Miss Hodges? At that time, a good hour at least. Well, then, if you hadn't forgotten something and gone back well, to... Them fellas would have gotten away with what they tried to do. But they didn't. I snuck back to the house soft and easy. It must have taken me a good 15 or 20 minutes. And here was them two burglars trying to bust open the trunk in my bedroom. Well, they had time to think I grabbed them, taught them a lesson, and phoned the cops to come and pick up the pieces. They were trying to open a trunk in your bedroom? Yeah. Uh, come on, I'll show you. There. Uh, that old circus prop trunk. Hmm. Looks more like a steel safe than a trunk. Well, it was built special to carry the big weights I used in my act. It's almost as strong as a safe, and there's a doggone good luck on it. Take a long time to open that trunk without a key, and I always carry that with me. You, uh, you keep something valuable in that trunk, Miss Hodges? Why, well, um, uh, nothing any burglar could cash in on very heavy. Uh, I use it for storage. There's, um, mostly just clothes in there and, um, linens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Miss Williams, I, um, well, it's kind of what you call my hope chest. <laughs> I see. Just because a girl is big doesn't mean she has to die an old maid. Well, you're not the old maid type, Miss Hodges. I ain't going to be one, either. Say, is, uh, is everything in this room just as it was when you discovered those two men? Mm, pretty near the same. This dresser set looks like silver. Teddy Sterling. I won it in the ladies' wrestling contest. Hmm. This very handsome clock. The case is solid 18-karat gold. I got it for busting a hammer throw record. Uh, they were here in plain sight when those men were here. Just as you see them now. Well, Miss Hodges, why do you suppose they didn't take these things instead of trying to open that trunk? The cops asked me that, and the answer is, I got no idea. There isn't anything in that trunk that'd do anyone but me the slightest bit of good. Oh, oh there's my doorbell. <laughs> Excuse me. Here, go ahead. Casey, why do you suppose... This attempted that... burglary is becoming interesting, Annie. Why do you suppose that watchdog was poisoned last week? Oh, I'd forgotten about that. Ambrose! Queenie, my darling. Ambrose, I have company. Company? Oh, Miss Williams! Uh, Mr. Casey, uh, would you come out here? Sure, Miss Hodges. Oh, I, I want you to meet my uh, my friend, Mr. Higginbotham. How are you? Uh, Mr. Higginbotham? Uh, how do you do? Uh, Mr. Higginbotham works at the Lindenhurst Aircraft. He's one of their most valuable men. 
Uh, Miss Williams and Mr. Casey are from the newspaper, Ambrose. Oh, uh, about the uh, burglary, I suppose. You heard about them burglars, Ambrose? Yes, a policeman told one of the guards at the plant, and the guard told me. I'm so glad you caught those crooks cleaning. They were trying to get into our trunk. Dear, uh, I, I mean, they uh, they might have cleaned me out of house and home if I hadn't stopped them. Yes. Uh, uh, were you and Miss Williams just about to leave, Mr. Casey? Leave? Well, well I've told you all there is to tell. Oh. I've only taken one picture of you, Miss Hodges. Oh, well, uh, take your pictures, of course. I suppose I shoot one of you and uh, uh, Mr. Higginbotham together. No, no, I've had nothing to do with the burglary. I mean, uh, I can be of no interest to your newspaper readers. Oh, Ambrose is the retiring kind, Mr. Casey. <laughs> Why not have one of us two together, Ambrose? It'll be all right now. No. Okay. Well, I'll take a few more of Miss Hodges alone, then we'll be on our way. And then, Anne, we'll uh, we'll stop at the old Turnpike Precinct Station and see what the cops have learned about those two men that tried to rob you, Miss Hodges. Uh, why will you do that? Hmm? Well, it's my line of business, Mr. Higginbot. And besides that, I'm a curious guy. I got a headquarters report on the fingerprints of those two eggs just before you and Miss Williams walked into the station here, Casey. Yeah? One of them is Gus Newton. Gus Newton? Well, he's a notorious safe cracker. One of the cleverest box men in the racket. Well, he's always going out for furs and jewelry, big stuff. Yeah. He must have been awfully low in the chips to be prowling a farmhouse. Well, did you make him talk any? You can make his kind talk, Miss Williams. Or guys like the other fellow. Who's the other fellow, sir? Name's Loader. The FBI want him for suspected espionage. And illegal entry into this country. Hmm. Funny, ain't it? Yeah. So what do you know about a guy named Ambrose Higginbotham, sir? Oh, uh, he's the little shrimp Big Queenie's sweet on. Works for the Lindenhurst aircraft. Yeah, that's the guy. Is he okay? He couldn't hold a job at Lindenhurst if he wasn't. They're doing some hush-hush government stuff there, and their employees are investigated pretty thoroughly. Um, why do you ask about him? I was just curious. Uh, what do you know about Miss Hodges, Sergeant Roy? Plenty, Miss William. And all of it good. <laughs> Queenie's a little weak in the head where men are concerned. Her size makes most guys fight shy of her, and she don't like it that way. But a better woman hasn't been made yet. I figured that. Well, thanks, Sarge. Come along, Annie. We'll do back at the office. Yeah, uh, so long, Sergeant. Drop in again when you're out here in the sticks. Yeah, we will. So long. So long. Oh, boy. I hate face is cold again. Me too. After I drop you at the office, Ann... I'll have this trip to make again. Why? Because I'd like to know more about that big trunk of Miss Hodges. I'm going to pay her another visit this evening. You mean we'll pay her another visit? Mm-mm. No, Annie. I'm making this call alone. Oh, why? Annie, look. Miss Hodges is a gal. When a guy wants to make himself popular in Florida, he doesn't go there with a crate of California oranges. <laughs> You know, once most weddings were in June, but today there are almost as many marriages in January. So if you have the problem of selecting a wedding gift, I'd like to suggest Anchor Hawking's amazing new kind of dinnerware, jadeite. Now it's spelled J-A-D-E-I-T-E, jadeite. And jadeite has the color and texture of rare oriental jade, yet it's as sturdy and heat-proof as the oven glass you use for baking, and it costs less than half as much as any other dinnerware you can buy. A 35-piece Jadeite dinner service for six, including six cups, six saucers, six dessert plates, six salad plates, six dinner plates, a big vegetable bowl, a platter, and a sugar and creamer set costs less than five dollars. Now, naturally, you needn't wait for a wedding to buy Jadeite. You'll find it in open stock at chain stores, department and hardware stores, as well as other stores selling chinaware and glass. Now, remember the name, Jadeite, the newest triumph of Anchor Hocking. The most famous name in glass. Mr. Casey! Good evening, Miss Hodges. I hope you'll forgive me for intruding on you again. But some of the pictures I took of you this afternoon didn't do you justice, I thought. And, well, I, I thought you... I'd be kind enough to let me shoot some more. Why, of course. Uh, uh, come in. Oh, thanks very much. That uh, pretty little lady, Miss Williams, 
Isn't Whitley? No. Oh, that good-looking gentleman I met here, Mr. Higginbotham. Go on. Mm, Ambrose left just a few minutes ago. I cooked dinner for him. You did? Uh-huh. <laughs> Lucky guy. But you're a swell cook. Well, I know how to do a few things besides lifting quarter-ton barbells. <laughs> I've already guessed that. Uh, pick up your overcoat, Mr. Casey. Right. Don't you feel the cold when you go out again? Thanks. Oh, wait, I got, I got something in my pocket. Hope you won't think I'm presuming too much on short acquaintance of it. Well, well, this is for you. A box of it. Your chocolate creams. <laughs> Hope you like them. Oh, they're my favorite candy. I'm glad. Oh. Well, I suppose you want to take those pictures as soon as possible so you can get back to your office. I'll go pat them a note. Oh, I'm in no hurry, no, no. Matter of fact, I'd like to talk to you while Miss Hodges get better acquainted. What do you mean, Mr. Casey? Well, it isn't often a man meets a woman like you. No, it ain't. I'm a freak. A female giant. Only a few like me in the whole world. But I ain't brainless, Mr. Casey, and not altogether. I I don't like to be kidded. You ain't trying to kid me, are you? No, Miss Hodges. I figured you for a nice guy. Say, you don't have to call me Miss Hodges. My friends call me Queenie, and we're going to be friends. I hope so. Really? I know so. Casey. Thanks. I... Oh, nuts. I was trying to put something over on you, and you've made me feel like a louse. My cards are face up from this time on. What do you mean? I I... haven't come out here because I want more pictures or because I'm a wolf on the hunt. I'm here to find out what you've got in that trunk that those burglars tried to open. You said you used the trunk for a hope chest. I do. And what business is it of yours, Mr. Casey? It's none. None of my business. I know that. I'm not a cop who has a right to question you. I'm just a newspaper stiff out for pictures and exclusive stories. And you don't have to give them to me. I'm a step for folks who lay their cards on the table. I'll tell you what you want to know, Casey. Thanks. But learning about that trunk won't give you any big news feed. This has been a secret up to now. Ambrose and I are going to be married. You and Mr. Higginbotham? Uh-huh. Which makes that old trunk more than just a hope chest. It's full of things I've accumulated for our wedding. Clothes, nice linens, plus a lot of U.S. savings bonds Ambrose has given me to put away. Savings bonds? Yeah, made out in my name. That's why I told you this afternoon that nothing in the trunk could do a burglar any good. But it, there's nothing there but clothes and linen and savings bonds in your name? In my name and his. Oh, well, I'll open the trunk and show you. Come on. Ambrose and I have been having some little arguments about them bonds. You see, he's been giving them to me at least one a week ever since we got secretly engaged last September. We kept our engagement secret because he was getting a divorce. Oh, divorce? Uh-huh. It was only ten days ago, and then to celebrate, he wanted me to let him have the bond so that he could cash him in and buy me a swell wedding present. I see. But I said, no, we'll just let them bonds stay as they are and draw interest. They're the only wedding present I want, I told him. But ten days ago, you refused to let him have the bond. Yeah. He was pretty sore about it. And he was sore again tonight because I wouldn't let him have them after them burglars were here. <laughs> ah, he'll get over his mad. I carry the only key that's trunk around my neck. It's kind of precious to me. It's uh, my future, Mr. Casey. Yes, I understand. There. Now, it's open. See for yourself. The bonds are in this compartment in them sealed manila envelopes. In sealed envelopes? Yeah, Ambrose gave them to me that way so I get a big surprise when they're finally open. You see, I don't know how big those bonds are. Some may be only 25, some may be hundreds or bigger. Queenie. Will you open one of those envelopes now? Oh, I couldn't do that. Then I'll have to do it. No, no, give me that. I, I won't let You're you. You're too late now to stop me. Look, look. It ain't a bond. It's just paper. Craftsman's tracing paper. It's a plan of some kind. It's like only a small section of a plan, like part of an airplane wing. I don't understand. I think I do. Queenie, your Ambrose works in the drafting room of Lindenhurst Aircraft. They've been working on jet propulsion planes, and your Ambrose has been tracing blueprints. He didn't dare keep those tracings, so he tricked you into keeping them. And when his copying was complete, he tried to get the sections back from you, but you refused to let him have those envelopes. 
which accounts for the attempted burglary today. Oh, you don't mean that Ambrose... Miss Hodges, one of the burglars you caught here is a known enemy of our government. I can't believe it. Because you're a fool. Ambrose. Hello, Deacon Potter. Put up your hands, both of you. Okay. Put them up, Queenie, or I shoot. All right, Ambrose. Now, stay that way. I saw your car pull up in front of this house tonight, Mr. Casey. I thought it best to stay around. I let myself in very quietly and have been uh, listening. You're selling out your country. You're something I hoped I'd never meet. Traitor. Uh, certain people will pay me well for those plans. And you conned me into helping you. Nobody would suspect you of hiding stolen plans, and it was so easy to make you believe that I was your devoted future husband. <laughs> yeah, it was a sin. Until now, fella, I thought a worm was the lowest thing on earth. Your opinion doesn't matter to me, Casey, or hers either. In a few minutes, you'll both be very dead, but first I'll... Uh... Take my savings bond from this trunk. No, you won't. Don't oh, close that. Don't you lock it. Well worked, Queenie. When he had his eyes on you, I got him. Pick up that gun I knocked out of his hand. Oh, I ain't bothered with any gun. I just want my hands on that rat. Don't let her touch me. Help. Uh, Marco, Marco. Put up your hand. I forgot to tell you, fools. I had friends outside. Come in, Joe. This Ambrose, this weakling, had to call for our help. He could not handle these people alone. This Casey jumped me, Marco. She should have killed You're me. You're a bungler. Do you even let her lock the trunk again? She has a key in her hand. Take it from her, Joe. Yes, Captain. You don't have to take it. I'll give it to him. Here. Uh, Captain, it is broken. Useless. I just busted it in pieces for you, and it's the only key there is. Queenie, you're some girl. Ambrose, a garage adjoins this house? Yes, sir. There's a door into it from the kitchen. You and Mr. Casey will proceed to that garage, Miss Hodges. I ain't They've going to... they the drop on us, Queenie. Better do as they say. You're correct, Mr. Casey. Both of you, Go. All right. Open that door, Ambrose. I will. Be ready, Joe. Yes, Captain. Go into that garage, Miss Hodges and Casey. Okay. Joe. Now. Look out, Casey. Oh, you hit him from behind. I'll fix you. Get this big woman, too, with your black chair. Uh, I am fine. Uh, uh, God got her. She almost got us first. Yeah, uh, she is more strong as a elephant. Get rope. Find their hands and feet and gag them. Why don't you kill them now, Marco? Get it over. The important thing now is to get those plans. Uh, uh. Uh, the lock is very loose now, Captain. It's beginning to break free. It has taken a very long time. Ah, it's strong lock. Riveted to steel. Yep. Ah, I have broke it off. At last. Open the lid. Ah. There are the envelopes, Marco. I see them, Ambrose. I put them in my pockets. Now, you'll pay me for them. The complete plan is they are ready to assemble. The complete plan, the secret plan... You will be you... paid. First, I have another payment to make. Those two in the garage. You mean you're going to kill them now? Yes. Huh. Bring that little crowbar, Joe. It will be a quiet instrument of execution. Come, both of you. Huh. I'm looking forward to this. That Casey nearly twisted my arm off in Queens. There will be nothing personal in their punishment, Ambrose. I don't care why or how they get what's coming to them, just so they don't get it before they can turn me over to the FBI. Joe, you bound them very securely? Yes. Even the big woman could not get free, Captain. Ah, ah see? They lie on the floor just like we left them. Hmm. Their eyes are open. They have recovered consciousness. That's good. Put away your gun, Ambrose. None of us need such noisy weapons now. You're the boss, Marco. Ah! Get a woman off my throat. I don't scream. Uh, it was nice of you guys to come within our reach. I've finished my mug, Queenie. Oh, so have I. Now it's your turn, Ambrose. Let me go, Queenie. Don't. Don't. Uh, no, not too hard, Queenie. Leave Queenie. something for the cops to take away. Oh, they'll take Ambrose away in sections, just like he stole them plans. What? The window. Oh, Oh, someone's crashing to the door. Pick up your hand. Who? Who? FBI, man. FBI. You heard me, Casey. Bill Travers. Oh. <laughs> you surprised? Surprised? Am I? How did you get here? Why? We've been waiting for Higginbotham and these guys to come out of the house and walk into our arms. But then when we heard a battle going on in the garage here, it seemed best to cut in. Hey, you've done a job on these birds. Wait a minute, Bill. You knew about Higginbotham and those stolen plans? Well, the FBI doesn't miss many bets, Casey. I'll say they don't. Well, we've been wise little Ambrose ever since he first traced the section of a secret jet plane blueprint and smuggled it out of Lindenhurst's plant. 
And after that, we made it easy for him to trace and smuggle out sections of the wrong blueprint. The wrong one? That's right. You see, we had an idea that Higginbotham was using this place as a hideout for the false plan. But our real concern was to find the big boys. You mean you were watching them in this house when I came here? Uh Uh-huh. We saw you come into the house, but we couldn't identify in the darkness. You were an unexpected development that caused us a little worry. Why did you come here? Uh, well, I was sticking my nose into something I might have known you FBI guys have under control. Say, say, Bill, look, I got a camera around somewhere. How about letting me do a job I do know something about? We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment, but first let me ask you a question. Tell me, are you proud of the coffee you serve? Well, here's a way to make delicious coffee at a moment's notice without fuss or bother of any kind. All you need is a spoon, a cup, and a glass jar. A glass jar of soluble coffee. Put a spoonful of this delicious new kind of coffee in a cup, add hot water. That's all there is to it. But be sure your soluble coffee comes to you in convenient anchor glass jars. That anchor glass jar saves you so much trouble in measuring. There's no waste from spilling. And what's more important, glass jars protect the flavor and freshness of soluble coffee against harmful moisture long after the jar is opened. Enjoy a cup of good coffee whenever you want it. There's no more fuss or bother than pouring out a cup of hot water. Use soluble coffee out of clean, sanitary, anchor glass containers. You know, two-thirds of the packers of soluble coffee protect their products by using clean, sanitary, anchor glass containers and anchor caps. Both products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. What happened, Ethelbert? Annie, you know, I still feel like a dope. Well, why? You brought back a good story and some swell exclusive pictures. I ain't heard all the story yet. After them fellas bound you and Miss Hodges hand and foot, Casey, how'd you get free? Uh, oh, that? Yeah. Well, there was a car in the garage with old tire chains on the wheels. Old tire chains? Mm-hmm. Some of the links were worn so thin that the edges were like knives, and that's how we used them. Huh. That queenie must be a swell fella. Oh, yeah. She's aces. <laughs> Annie, you know what she's going to do? What? She's promised to knit me wool socks. Uh, looks like you're going to have some romantic competition, Miss William. As my sister Edna says, quote, In the wintertime, the way to a man's heart begins with a pair of warm feet. <laughs> Unquote. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Crime Photographer is directed by John Dietz. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. The part of Queenie was played by Hope Emerson, and Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>